Time having arrived on Monday, March 3rd, 2014, 7 o'clock, I hereby call the Finance Committee a meeting to order. Madam Clerk, number one, please. Appointment, Joseph C. Gonsalves of 292 Field Street, Brockton, to the Brockton Redevelopment Authority for a five-year term ending February 2019. Invited, Joseph C. Gonsalves. Good evening, Mr. Gonsalves. How are you tonight? Very well. How about yourself? Good, thank you. All right. Councilors, any questions for Mr. Gonsalves? Mr. Chairperson, I'm excited to see that you're serving, and um, congratulations, and the city can certainly benefit from your, your expertise and your commitment to Brockton, so thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Councilor Stewart. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Motion's been made, uh, properly seconded, uh, to approve a federal recommendation to full city council. All in favor? All opposed, that motion carries. <coughs> Thank you, sir. Madam Clerk, number two, please. Appointment Harry, Henry Tataglia of 33 Brook Street, Brockton, to the License Commission for a three year term ending February 2017. Invited Henry Tataglia. Good evening, Mr. Tataglia. How are you tonight? Councilors, any questions? Motion to approve. Second. Second. Motions were made and properly seconded for favorable recommendation to the full city council. All in favor of that? All opposed? That motion carries. Thank, Thank you, you Mr. Tatalia. Madam Clerk, number three, please. Appointment David Wheeler of 140 Bishop Street, Brockton, to the planning board for a five year term ending <coughs> February 2019. Invited David Wheeler. Mr. Wheeler, good evening. Good evening. How are you, sir? Good. Thank you. Have a statement or councils have any questions? Mr. Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry. Nope. Well, I'll yield to Council Stewart. Well, I actually know Mr. Wheeler very well. And I think it's a very, very dangerous move to have him on the planning board. <laughs> dangerous? <laughs> dangerous that he knows you, I think. <laughs> Said you wouldn't say anything. <laughs> I'm very excited to have him there as well. Uh, as most people may know, he writes uh, the weekly columns for the Enterprise, and they're often very insightful and also principal of the Southeastern Region High School, so excited to have, uh, and a Brockton resident, of course, and so glad to have you there, too. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Council Denapoli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Wheeler, good evening. I, uh, I'm, I'm glad that you're going to serve on the planning board, and uh, I, I guess you took my advice. I says, get involved, get involved, and uh, it's a great position, and uh, he's a, I want you to know that he's a neighbor of mine, and he's got some great credentials, and congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Motion to approve. Motion. Second. Made. Was there a second on that? Second. second. Motion was made. It was properly seconded for favorable <coughs> recommendation to the full city council. All in favor of that? All opposed? That motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Thank Wheeler. You. Have a good evening. Madam Clerk, number four, please. Appointment. Adeline Jeffrey China of 30 Foster Street, Brockton, to the Brockton Zoning Board of Appeals for a three-year term ending February 2017. Invited Adeline Jeffrey Charnell. Good evening, Mr. Charnell. How are you? Good evening. Do you have any statement? No, I don't. Okay. Councilors, any Mr. questions? Mr. Mr. President. Councilor Dubois. Hello, Mr. Charnel. How are you? How are you doing? I'm wonderful. Thank you so <laughs> much for being here. So you live on Bishop Street? No, I don't. I live Foster. on 30 Foster Street. Foster Street. Oh, please excuse me. I'm sorry about no that. I, yeah, I know. Um, so how long have you been in the city? I've been in the city since I've been 11 years old. Wonderful. And what kind of, what kind of background do you have? I am a finance major. So you're a finance major. Where do you go to school? I went to Bridgewater State and Newberry College. Wonderful. Okay. So um, I'm very concerned about the Zoning Board of Appeals. So I'm so great. I'm so happy that um, there's someone that wants to volunteer that has that financial background and is interested in the city. Can you just get, maybe just tell me a little bit why you're, you wanted to be on the Zoning Board of Appeals? Uh, giving back to my city is very important to me. Uh, I've coached in the city, I've played football here, and I'm a dedicated Brocktonian, so that's one of the, those are some of the reasons why. I appreciate that. So um, from my perspective, when I come before the Zoning Board of Appeals with residents, usually the only time I come before the Zoning Board of Appeals is either when a whole bunch of residents approach me and are in support of something, or a whole bunch of residents approach me and are really against a, a development. And so I personally think the Zoning Board of Appeals is the most important board in the city. So it's, it's exciting that we have a new face, and I know that you're not a new face to a lot of people, just to me. So I look forward to getting to know you better. Thank you. 
And um, I'm just wondering a, about a little bit to try to get a little bit of um, information about how you feel about the development of the city. So, like, how do you feel about single family housing development opposed to multi family housing development? Have you come to any feelings on that? Or how? Um, I'm pretty um, biased in uh, single and multi family. Um, I think there's room for um, all developments in the city um, in some areas um, more than others, but um, I'm pretty I'm pretty open to um, the city and the uh, where the city can go pretty much great well thank you so much for being here and thank you for volunteering thank you thank you mr. chairman thank you council any other questions councils council Denapoli uh, thank you mr. chairman good evening uh, mr. Jeffrey do you know who you're replacing on the zoning board no I do not okay That's a, okay just just wondering I didn't know there was an opening but Congratulations. Thank you. And I, I'm sure that you'll be seeing all of us sometime sooner or later at the zoning board. I'm sure. Motion to approve. Second. 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 Motions were made properly seconded for a favorable <coughs> recommendation to the full city council. All in favor of that? All opposed? That motion carries. Thank you, sir. Have a good evening. Madam Clerk, number five, please. Appointment Richard Wernick of 8 Madrid Square, Unit 5, Brockton to the Board of Park Commissioners for a five year term ending February 2019. Invited Richard Wernick. Mr. Warner, good evening. Good evening. Do you have a statement or do you want to just take questions? I'll just take questions. Thank All you. All right. Thank you, sir. Council, any questions for Mr. Warnick? Motion to approve. Second. Second. Motions were made properly seconded for a favorable recommendation to the full city council. All in favor of that motion? All opposed? That motion carries. <coughs> thank you. Very much. Have a good evening, sir. Madam Clerk, number six, please. Appointment. Charles F. Studensky of 56 Manors Ave. Brockton to the Board of Park Commissioners for a five-year term ending February 2019. Invited Charles F. Oh, Studensky. Good evening, Mr. Studensky. Good you evening, Councillors. Do you have a statement or do you want to just take questions? No, I'll take any questions. Anybody have a question for Mr. Mr. Studensky? Mr. Chairman. Councillor Denapoli. <coughs> Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Studensky. Good evening, Good evening Councillor. I'm glad to see you. You're going to give something back to the city after <laughs> your retirement. <laughs> I have to watch what I say because there's a gentleman sitting over you watching me. Dad's watching. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Motion to approve. Second. Motion's made properly second for favorable recommendation to the full city council. All in favor of that motion? Hands up if you're in favor of it, please. All opposed? A motion carries. Thank you. Thank Mr. you, Council. You have a good evening. <clears throat> Madam Clerk, number seven, please. Appointment Richard E. Bath of 38 Frost Street, Brockton, as a trustee of the War Memorial Building for a three year term ending February 2017. Invited Richard E. Bath. Mr. Bath, good evening. Good evening, how are you? Please, sir. Do you have a statement or do you want to take questions? No, ordinarily I would have a statement, but I'm watching Councillor Cruz, and so I thought I would just, it'd be better just to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> Probably wise. wise. <laughs> Councillors, any uh, questions for Mr. Bath? Mr. Chairman. Sir. Might as well get. <laughs> Again. Good, good evening, Mr. Bath. It's good evening, Nice Council to see you. Down. You're returning into uh, a sort of a politics really? mode uh, on the War Memorial. I'm sure you'll do a good, jo good job. Well, I think the War Memorial uh, is a uh, treasure in the city of Brockton. I've got some experience running a, a similar building for LaSalle College for the last 15 years. Well, so, congratulations. Uh, I'm sure the uh, next uh, young lady behind you will uh, keep an eye on you there. Motion to approve. Second. Motions made properly second. A point of information for those that don't know, Mr. Bath honorably served on the school committee for Ward 2. So he's a former elected member of the city of Brockton. Motion made properly second. A favorable recommendation to the full city council. All in favor of that motion? All opposed? That motion carries. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Have a good evening. <coughs> Madam Clerk, number eight, please. Appointment Lori Monahan of 174 Manomet Street, Brockton, as a trustee of the War Memorial Building in the city of Brockton for a three year term ending February 2017. Invited Lori Monahan. This is the Monahan that we like. <laughs> Good evening, Mrs. Monahan. How are you? <laughs> Council, does that have any questions for I, Mrs. I, Monahan? One question. Council Cruz. I'd just like to ask you, Mrs. Monahan. Uh, obviously, you've uh, made some poor judgments in the past. <laughs> <laughs> are we, uh, uh, is it safe to assume you'll make wonderful judgments at the uh, War Memorial First, Building? I do my best. <laughs> motion to recommend. Second. Second. Chairman on the motion. motion. Counselor. Ms. Con congratulations, Mrs. Monahan. Thank Th you. There's an empty seat right beside me if you'd like to come and visit. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Did you have a question? I, I do. Um, so, Ms. Monahan, very excited to have you on the board. Really uh, have appreciated your involvement in the city. And uh, frankly, I see you more often in many functions and 
um, than I can even try to imagine. So the fact that you're just in touch with Brockton on many levels and you're giving of your time and your expertise is great. And we know that your son also is serving presently in the military, so you have sort of a first-hand account of what it means to serve the country in that capacity. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, motion's been made properly seconded for a favorable uh, recommendation to the full city council. All in favor of that motion? All opposed? That motion carries. Thank you, Mrs. Thank you. Monahan. Have a good night. Now the other Monahan has to come back and join us. <laughs> uh, number nine, Madam Clerk. Reappointment, Mark Lindy of 83 Rang Rangley Avenue, Brockton, to the Board of Trustees for the Brockton Public Library for a three-year term ending February 2017. Invited Mark Lindy. Mr. Lindy, good evening, sir. Good evening, Councillors. Do you have a statement or do you want to take questions? Very brief statement. The library was my first job when I was 15 years old. I thoroughly enjoyed it and uh, having served on it for a number of years, I'd like to continue. We have a nice mix of experienced trustees and new trustees and we have a vacancy that we're awaiting an appointment for. Thank you, sir. Councilor, any questions? Mr. Chairman. Councilor Denapoli. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Councilor. Uh, you've served how many years on the Board of Trustees? I of the library started Foundation? in 1996. I filled the vacancy. 1996. You're almost as old as I am. There you go. Motion you have more here. Motion to approve. Second. 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 Motions were made. It's been properly seconded for a favorable recommendation <coughs> to the full city council. All in favor of that motion? <coughs> All opposed. That motion carries. Thank, Thank you, you Council. Lindy. Madam Clerk, number 10, please. Reappointment. Miles Jackson of 25 Stearns Avenue, Brockton, as a trustee of the War Memorial Building for a three year term ending February 2017. Invited Miles Jackson. Good evening, Mr. Jackson. Good evening. How are you, sir? I'm fine. Do you have a statement or do you want to take questions? Um, just I served four years in the United States Air Force. Thank you, you sir. I'm a veteran. Thank you, sir. Mr. Mr. Chairman. A few, few. Mr. Denapoli. <laughs> Thank you. He's with Stuart now. What good, the heck good, is going on? Good evening. Good evening. Well, how are you? Good. I just wanted to let you know that please keep an eye on the two new people we put on the board with you, all right? <laughs> definitely. Especially, especially Mr. Sadinsky. Oh, yes, definitely and, so. And congratulations. Thank you very much. Mr. Motion Chairman. to recommend favor. On the motion. Oh. Council Stewart first, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. So, Mr. Uh, Jackson, great to see you here. Um, you. I often see you at, at church and uh, know you're incredibly involved in the community and uh, really appreciate your giving more time in this thank capacity. You. And uh, so, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, Dubois. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to concur. I think you're wonderful and your wife's wonderful and I'm so glad that you're serving the community and your brother and everybody that you seem to be related to are pretty nice people. So thank you. I'm happy that you're over there. I'm thank looking you. forward to it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, there was a motion made. It was properly seconded and it was a favorable recommendation to the full city council. All in favor of that motion, please raise your hand. All opposed, that motion carries. Thank you, sir. Thank you, council. Have a good evening. Madam Clerk, number 11, please. Order transfer of three thousand dollars from the parking meter reserve fees to the parking authority purchase of services to fund the lease of parking lot in <coughs> Petronelli Way in order to accommodate demand for parking. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Robert H. Malley, Executive Director of the Parking Authority. Mr. Malley, good evening. Good evening. How are you? Good, thank you. Can you give us a quick uh, summary yeah, of this? This is, this is uh, money that we need to uh, pay for a lease for a parking lot on Petronelli uh, Way. Uh, it's adja adjacent to the D lot now between the D lot and the uh, car dealership uh, and we do have people who, who want to park there so we certainly need the parking. Thank you. Council Cruz. Thank you. Uh, how long does the $3,000 last? The le lease it for? Until the end of the fiscal year. So $750 a month. This fiscal year and then yes. you won't need to transfer your, and then your budget. For yeah then we will put it into the regular budget. We already have put it into the submission budget submission for next year. Okay, thank you. And do you, do you happen to know how much is in the parking meter reserve fee about? Uh, between the two of them, between the, um, the meters and the, uh, the garage account, it's about $890,000. Okay. Of course, our budget will be deducted from that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Motion to approve. Second. On the motion. Mr. Malley, is that, is that going to be a year lease or <coughs> is it a long, long term it's, lease? It's a long term lease. This one's 12 years. 12 year lease? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Motion's been made. Council on the motion. Uh, Mr. Malley, just a quick question yeah. for you. Um, Certainly. What do you get in revenue from that, uh, from that parking lot? Uh, Forty-five spaces at uh, thirty bucks a piece currently. So, is it fully occupied? It will be as soon as we have the the money and pay the lease. It will be fully occupied. They're they're overcrowded now. All the all the lots in that area. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
Councilors, any other questions on the motion? No. Motion was made. It was properly seconded for a favorable recommendation to the full city council. All in favor of that motion? All opposed? That motion carries. Thanks, Mr. Malley. Thank you. Madam Clerk, number 12, please. Order a transfer of $11,864 from the Finance Department Personal Services other than overtime to the Mayor's Department Personal Service other than overtime in order to restore the funding paid as separation costs to the staff members of Mayor Linda okay. Belzotti. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer. Ms. Condon, good evening. This good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Councilors. Uh, about a month or so ago, the City um, Council just approved a request for financing for staffing for the mayor's office plus the cost of the separation of the uh, separation costs for some of the staff members of the previous administration. What this particular order does is to break out the component of that disapproved order which pays for the staff separation costs for employees under Mayor Balzotti. These costs have already been paid. Motion to approve. Second. <coughs> On the motion. Council Stanisky. If I could, Mr. Conan, didn't we take a sum of money already and, and endorse it, vote for it, and that was to pay the separation costs? No, sir, that was disapproved. I'm sorry? It was disapproved. It was not, a, it was not approved by City Council. Okay. All right, thank you very much. On the motion, uh, Mr. Conan, the, the 11864 for separation that's already been paid. Is this, uh, what I'm confused about is it's from your office to the mayor's office. Is this replenishing what was already paid out? Yes. From the mayor's budget? Yes, that's correct. Okay. <clears throat> Anybody else on the motion? Council Barnes. So, rem if I'm remembering correctly, and you kind of just confirm what I, th what I think, we did not approve the original amount that Correct. came forward that included this separation Correct. cost for the three employees of the Belzotti administration, correct? Correct. However, they were already, uh, they were paid notwithstanding that. Well, they, <clears throat> the separation costs were paid within days of the uh, beginning of January because they were due under the, under the law and they had to be paid. At about the same time that they were being paid, uh, the mayor's office submitted to the city council request for an appropriation which included this amount of money plus an additional amount of money to pay his staff because there were going to be increased cost in his staff as in addition to this amount of money that was paid out of the mayor's budget. That request was disapproved by the city council. Mm -hmm. So now we're coming back and we're saying to at least approve this amount of money because to do otherwise would leave the mayor's budget short by an amount of money which wasn't anticipated at the start of the budget year because it wasn't anticipated in the fiscal 14 budget that we'd be paying separation costs to staff members of Mayor Belzotti's office. So this would replenish that money in the budget. So the no vote meant nothing? No. The mo no vote meant that you disapproved that, uh, that request that was in front of you. Now, not we now we split it out and we're asking you to approve this piece of it. Um, okay, I don't know if I'm understanding. I, I don't know if I'm understanding. Um, I'll defer. Council Dubois. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Hi, uh, hi uh, Mr. Condon. So this is being taken, it was like what, like $34,000, the old appropriation, or was yeah, something? A little bit more than that, I think, yes. It was something, and then it got switched to another one because the number was wrong. Yes. And now this is a portion of that. I thought the number was around $10,000 the last no, time. No, the, the amount that was included in both appropriations for the separation cost was this $11,864. So then the other portion of the money, is that also going to come through th as separate appropriations? Yes, that's the next item on the agenda, I think. So does the next item on the agenda okay then I'll then I'll talk about that then yes. thank you very much thank you mr. chairman anybody else motion to recommend favorably second right. motion was made properly seconded for a favorable recommendation all in favor of that motion all opposed motion carries it's favorable recommendation to the full <coughs> city council thank you council uh, number 13 madam clerk Order a transfer of $23,004 from the Finance Department Personal Services other than overtime to the Mayor's Department Personal Services other than overtime in order to provide additional financing for the present members of the Mayor's staff for the fiscal 2014. One staff member will be transferred to the payroll to fix an existing vacancy in the Safe and Successful Youth Initiatives Grant for a portion of the balance of the fiscal year. This will reduce the previously required amount of funding. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer. Mr. Condon, good evening. Good evening. 
Want to just take questions? Uh, I think so. I mean, uh, basically, this is the other portion of that uh, appropriation which was disapproved. It's a, for a lower amount of money, and the reason for that is that subsequent to that disapproval, there became an opening in a grant, successful and uh, safe and successful youth initiative grant. That grant has approved the use of a staff member in the mayor's office to temporarily serve as a grant manager. While she serves in that role, she won't be getting paid out of the mayor's budget, won't be doing work as a paid employee in the mayor's office. Therefore, this amount of money is a little bit reduced from what it was back in January, and we're asking for your approval of it. Thank you, Mr. Condon. Castellaneri. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Condon, just not to be rude, but I mean, the last two, um, the last two orders, and this order and the one previous, it's money that's coming out of the personnel. It's coming out of your Yes. Department, finance department. Yes. Is there anything left to your department or we just... Well, there was a vacancy in my department uh, and that vacancy still exists and so the money is available if I don't fill that vacancy for the balance of the year, which I won't do. Okay, but then come July, you're probably going to want that vacancy filled. Uh, yes, I would like to have it filled, but whether it gets filled or not will be up to the mayor and I think that decision will be dependent upon how the budget in its entirety looks when we put it together. Right, right. And, and you just answered another question because that's my greatest concern is what's the budget really going to look like come July 1st or June when it comes to me. That's, what's, that's what scares me is, is we keep doing this spending and spending and spending. But I just, I just hope yes. we're all well aware of that. Yeah, that's, no that's no further point, point from me. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Council, Chairman. Thank you. Council Dubois. Um, I just, I'm going to try to take this sentence by sentence. I just want to understand exactly what I'm voting on, if you don't mind. Okay, so, okay, in order to provide additional financing for the present members of the mayor's staff for fiscal year 2014. Correct. Who are the present members of the mayor's staff? Well, uh, just a second, if you mind. There's, there's, been no, there's been no change in that, but I'll, I'll give you the names of them. If you don't mind, because I, I, didn't, I didn't give... Let me see if I got back up on that. Okay. I don't know if I did. So. I don't think I did. Wait a minute. Let me just see. I looked through it and I didn't see any. Yeah, there isn't. So could you just, just run through them for my notes? Of course, the mayor himself. Yes. The chief of staff. Yeah. Uh, Bob Buckley. Yeah. Uh, from the previous staff, the holdover and continuing is Sylvia Carvalho. From the previous staff and a holdover is Corin Capiello, and Corin is the person whose salary will not be fully paid by the mayor's budget for the balance of the year because of the use of that grant. And then on the new staff is uh, Carla DeRosa, Fred Fontaine, Nubi Rato, and Nick Giacinto. What's number eight? And with the Nick Giacinto. Nick. Okay, so um, so that's wonderful. Thank you. One staff member will be transferred to the payroll. What's that mean? Transferred to the payroll. What does that it mean? Means that the grant uh, for s safe and successful youth, initi youth <coughs> initiative, which is a grant fund that's been approved by the city council, it had a grant manager which was being paid from that fund. That position is vacant, and the grant has approved the use of ca uh, Corin Capiello for one month to serve in that grant manager position while we replace the grant manager. We have to search for a replacement. Who so was instead the of being grant manager before? <clears throat> I don't know the name of the person who was in that, in that slot. Could you find that out for me? No? Or who would okay. I ask to find that out for me? I'm not sure if the mayor knows. I mean, I don't need to know it now, but if you wouldn't mind either like shooting me an email and just yep. letting me know, I would really appreciate it. And so how much is that going to be? How much, well, the, the how person much are you going to take from the grant to... to one month of Corn Capiello salary. And how much would that be? It's the annual rate of $63,600, so a month, a month worth of $63,600. $63,000. So what do you think? Is that what? $5,000 roughly. Okay, so $5,000 is $5, coming... $5,000 and change, yeah. $5,000 something is coming from this um, <coughs> Safe and Successful Youth Initiatives right. grant. And did you contact them and ask them, or how yes, do you know? Yes, they've approved that. They've approved it. So someone contacted them? Yes. Did you contact them? No, I did not. Do you know Mayor's, who did? Yeah, I think Corin did. Corin did, Capiello. great. I'm just trying to figure if I have any questions or if anybody asks right. me questions. Mm -hmm. I know who I can follow up with, and right. if anybody else has questions out there in the world, they can <coughs> follow up on their own. So I'm no, just trying to understand it 100%. And then... So, so let's just, you know, spitball it and say that's around 19,000 left, right? 
and that 19,000 is going to bridge the gap between the uh, the other eight staff members minus Corin for any no, the difference. Tw 23,000 is what's needed to pay all of these members for the months that they'll be paid out of the mayor's budget. So that'll be Nick Giacinto from the time he started, Bob Buckley from the time he started. There's a difference between Bob's salary and the previous uh, chief of staff salary. A couple of salaries are about the same, and then the newbie Rato is being paid by the revolving fund to the extent of 80% of his salary. And where is that in here? Where does it show like, that? Well, it's in the $23,000. That encompasses one-fifth of newbie Rato's salary. How much is that? Well, newbie's salary is uh, $41,751, so a fifth of that is being paid by the uh, mayor's budget, if this is approved. So, so none of the money is coming from the cable contract? None of this money is coming from the cable contract. This $23,004 is a transfer from my budget, already appropriated funds, which are in surplus because of a vacancy. 80% of newbies' costs will be coming from the cable revolving fund for the balance of the year. But and is that going to be appropriated, or how is that going to no, be? No, because it's a revolving fund which was set up by the City Council. Uh, be allowing it to be spent on cable related activities and it is to be spent without further appropriation. That's in the now, revolving fund. Now there was fund. a lot of controversy over if that was appropriate spending of those dollars and I find, I, I feel like this is a kind of a end run around open and transparent government. How are we going to get to the nut of the issue of if that money is appropriately being expended? So I feel like I'm going to I'm going to go through the city council process to verify that it's being appropriately expended and that doesn't seem to be going very far. So it's coming to the point that I feel like I have a fiduciary responsibility to contact the cable company and their attorneys to find out if that's how they're supposed to spend the money. Has anyone contacted the cable company and their attorneys to find out because last time you came here no one had even read the MOU two times ago when you first asked to utilize that money and we I was told that the revolving fund was based on the MOU and then I found out that nobody had read the MOU and then we all got the MOU and nowhere in the MOU does it say that you can use that money to pay for a staff member in City Hall. It doesn't say cable related activities. It says the BCA or BCCT will do bullet point, bullet point, bullet point, bullet point, bullet point, and nowhere in that MOU or the contract that I read does it say that the city hall can, can utilize part of that funds to pay for staff. So I feel like I have a fiduciary responsibility to, and I feel like you guys would feel like you have a fiduciary responsibility to make sure that if the cable company did find out that we were expending these dollars to pay for one of the mayor's staff, they wouldn't be able to utilize that as a reason to stop funding our services here in the city and put a million dollars in jeopardy. And so everyone can poo-poo that problem, but I saw the similar problem with how the city was <coughs> allocating CDBG funds like seven years ago and they almost got removed when I contacted HUD and they said that they were actually being misvoted mis uh, on. So I just want to make sure that we're covering all of our bases. So what makes you believe that this is all okay? May I answer now? The, I love yes. it. Okay. First of all, uh, I think it's been stated with respect, there are two different agreements that you've referenced there. One is the license agreement between Comcast and the city. The second is the MOU between BCCT and the city. Number Agreement number two, I hadn't seen until a couple of weeks ago. I'll get back to that. Agreement number one has been examined by the city solicitor's office, and they see nothing in that agreement which would prohibit the use of the monies in that revolving fund, as we've stated. State law provides that if you set up a revolving fund, that fund may be used to pay salary so long as it also is used to pay the benefits of that person. So I see nothing in state law that prohibits it. The third agreement that you referenced is a memorandum of understanding. I see nothing, nor does the legal department, in that agreement which prohibits the use of funds in addition to the amount that's supposed to go to BCCT for its budget. Nothing that prohibits the use of those funds for the purpose that we've just stated. So I don't see a prohibition about it. We also think we have a fiduciary responsibility to exercise, so we don't think we're stepping away from that in any way, shape, or form. And I think what we've proposed in front of you tonight is legitimate and okay and in the public interest. Now, what would happen if the City Council abolished that revolving fund? What would happen? Well, in the 
the case of the revolving fund that's already been approved for this fiscal year, every revolving fund needs to be reauthorized every single year. So you'll be getting a request from the city, uh, in front of the city council as a part of next year's budget if the mayor chooses to reestablish this revolving fund. If you don't approve that, then the balances in that fund go back to the general fund. In the typically, in the case of this particular one, because I think the license agreement doesn't anticipate it going to the general in fund. In the MOU. Yeah, that's right, but the MOU doesn't grab all of the license money, only grabs a portion of it. In that case, we have to look at how the balance in that fund would be appropriately distributed in accordance with the, both the license agreement and the MOU. I do not believe it would go back to the general fund. Great. Um, Mr. Nessarella, could you please come up? <clears throat> So you're the city council's attorney, buck stops with you, right? Now, no, really, the buck Sometimes. stops with the mayor. But you are the, you are the, um, the legal opinion. Um, I have concerns about expe how we're expending these revolving fund dollars and if they are being appropriately um, allocated. I read the MOU, I'm not an attorney. I read the contract, I'm not an attorney. And nowhere does it say that these dollars can be used in City Hall. What it says is these dollars, 75% of them, have to be used by BCCT for the bullet point, bullet point, bullet point. And the remaining dollars at BCCT's request of the mayor can be used for capital dollars. I would like to know, like on tape, why you think that this is okay. Because, I, because state statute, Massachusetts General Laws, authorizes the use as indicated by uh, Mr. Condon. Under Chapter 44, it clearly indicates that uh, revolving funds can be used in this fashion to pay salaries and fringe benefits. That, that controls and supersedes the agreements. And in fact, there is so it nothing in there is, there, is, there is nothing, well, it's, it's not inconsistent with the contract. So does, does the state statute supersede the contract that the city has with the cable company or the MOU that's between the city and uh, BCCT that says nothing about spending these monies for... If, if there is a contradiction between some term that is either vague or contradictory to the state statute, the state statute would supersede. In this instance, there is nothing that is inconsistent with the state statute. Where it remains silent, the answer lies within the Massachusetts general laws. So it is consistent and clearly within the scope and authority of the use of those funds. So we could take any money that we get for any purposes and roll it into, an, into a revolving fund and then be able to use it for salaries. Is that well, what you're saying? The, well, no, so I'm not saying that. If we got Chapter 90's monies and we rolled it into a revolving fund, would we be able to utilize that money to pay for salaries? I've limited my examination to these particular funds on the relative that arose out of this memorandum of agreement. So I'm not prepared to talk to Chapter 90 funds, but relative to the revolving fund that's from this contract, it is not violative of the contract. It's clearly consistent within the power and authority of the city and within the mayor's office. Could I ask you for a written determination on that that I can share with the cable con company Absolutely. and see if they agree with that? I would be pleased to respond. I would really, I would appreciate that and that would make me feel like I am holding up my fiduciary responsibilities that <coughs> every, all the parties in the contract know that the city is utilizing these funds to pay for staff salaries and if they have a problem with that then there isn't any, everybody's above board and above the table on that. When, like I'm no rush. But Council, when is, that, is that in the form of a motion requesting a formal legal opinion? I, I am making, thank you for the help, I'm making a motion to request a legal opinion of the city solicitor um, stating that um, what his opinion is of the city utilizing, uh, re revolve, not revolving fund, utilizing the cable money that goes through the revolving fund to pay for staff salaries. Second. As applicable to agenda 13. As applicable. Because 15 will be addressing the cable, but, but a motion yes. made by Council Dubois. Is there a second on that motion second. for a legal opinion? Motions were made properly seconded and asking uh, Attorney Nezzarella for a formal li uh, written legal opinion. All in favor of that motion? No, why not? Let's All opposed, that motion is going to carry. Thank you, Attorney. Thank you. I really appreciate the help on that. Um, and so once we get that, I'll probably um, file a resolve and ask you and someone from the cable company to come in and talk about no it. No problem. Don't mind. I really appreciate it. Thank My you pleasure. so much. Counselor, did Thank you want that before a formal vote next Monday? 
Could you do that? No pressure. If you can't do that, I can. <laughs> How about tomorrow? Wonderful. It's, Thank you. Thank Council, you. Are you done asking questions? I am. Okay. The Councilor, uh, Councilor Stewart. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairperson. A question for Mr. Condon. A question. So you've, you've been our CFO for how many years now? Uh, 23. 23 years. And you've served under how many mayors? I think this is the sixth. Right. But who's counting? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in terms of the diversity of the city, in terms of our constituents, the population, you've seen some dramatic changes in that yes, sir. diversity. And, and can you describe the changes in that diversity? In the city? Yes. Both uh, in the 23 years has yeah. been a tremendous change over in the population. The composition of the population is far more people of color and far more immigrants uh, from other parts of the world uh, than native born than they used to be in the city. And those immigrants speak, obviously, then have na different native languages than English. Yes, sir, they do. Uh, and do you believe that the role of, of government is to be able to effectively connect with your constituencies in those neighborhoods? Yes, I do. And if, if we're a, a city where in government, those principally responsible for making those connections are predominantly speaking English, that hinders that connection that we want to make with those constituencies, yeah, correct? Ahead. That's true. Okay, so the mayor's office now, um, uh, is it the most diverse you've seen in the mayor's office in your, your years here as CFO? Yes, they have grown more diverse over successful ma successive mayors, uh, but it certainly contains more diversity in this particular uh, mayor administration than in prior ones, but that has been a trend in, in the last uh, three. And you would agree to reflect that. And we're, we're trending in the right direction, you would In my agree. opinion, yes. And it's, it's more diverse, not just racially, but in terms of um, language skills, correct? Uh, I think there is probably, uh, yes, there's no doubt about that. There, there are more, there's more diverse language capability in the mayor's office now than there has been at any previous time. Right. And so if we agree that the important role of government is to be able to connect with its citizens and that having the right level of language skills in the mayor's office is an important capacity we would want to have to make that connection, correct? I agree with that. Uh, in terms of the uh, percentage of this, so this amount that's before us, which continues to decrease, uh, at the moment it's $23,004. What percentage of the city's present budget is $23,004? Uh, 23000 divided by $380 million. Yeah, <laughs> I don't what, know how to do that, that be? math in my head. Point zero 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 zero. One one hundredth of one percent, perhaps? Like, yeah. Okay. Um, and, um, and this does not represent new spending, correct? No, this represents transfer of an appropriation that's already right. been approved. So in those who are concerned that we're spending, that the mayor is spending additional monies, um, it certainly becomes more of a concern in the next fiscal year if we were to, to continue the spending. But for this fiscal year, we're spending within the budget, correct? That's correct. Now, it could be argued that you could not spend this money and have these savings roll over to next year. That's fair too. But if we're talking about 0.000000% of a, a budget rolling over to next year, the $23,004 to me seems like an insignificant amount of number, uh, an, an ins insignificant amount of money compared to the overall budget in return for having a mayor's office that's staffed appropriately to reach out to an ever-growing new population in the city. I would agree with that statement too, Councillor. Um, and then this issue of figuring out what next year's fiscal budget looks like. I'm assuming that you and the mayor are working on those details at the moment. Uh, the departmental budgets are now coming into my office uh, and uh, before the mayor begins his review on a budget by budget basis, I have some work to do with respect to estimating next year's revenues. I typically do that after I've got the month of February, so I've got two thirds of the year and I typically wait until we've had our health insurance renewals proposed by our health carriers and have an idea of what the state's going to require us to spend in the school department. All those are coming together right now, so we'll be getting uh, together pretty soon with the mayor. So the additional spending that I'm, I mean, I have concerns about some of the additional spending. I think I was the first city councilor in that initial finance committee meeting that suggested that you and the mayor come back before us and lay out your plans for spending and not do it ad hoc. And so I'm not suggesting that that doesn't concern me. But based on what I've, what you've presented for this fiscal year, um, you're, you're in budget or within budget. You can argue that we could save money by not spending it, but it's a small fraction of the overall budget. But the real question around what these costs look like in the upcoming fiscal year um, is something that you and your team will have to present to the city council during the budget cycle, and we have the option to um, amend or cut the budget based on those, those recommendations. And it's really at that point where you, the mayor's team and, and your team decide on what the 
the budget makeup looks like and if this and this whole political debate of not raising taxes and all that sort of stuff, but that will really in essence be all considered in the next fiscal year because this fiscal year's budget is already paid for. That's correct. Okay. Uh, so I will likely support this and um, I think that, as I would like to suggest to my colleagues, uh, I see a big return on investment for this very small amount of money, which is a staff that can actually connect to the residents of the city. And if, if our goal as elected officials is to make that connection, I think this is a very small price uh, in the mayor's office to make that possible. So thank, thank, you, thank you, Mr. CFO. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you, Councilor Bonds. Uh, yes, if I could ask uh, Mr. Condon, the, just to be clear, the grant funding, this money is to fulfill salary, at least one salary till the end of this fiscal year, correct? Yes. And, and the others included, right? This is enough money, if approved, so that everybody who is working in the mayor's office right now right. would be paid through the balance of the fiscal year at the salaries that were reported to you at the beginning of January and that they're currently earning. It would also allow for 80% of newbie salary to be paid by the revolving fund, only 20% from the general fund. That's in the 23,000. And it would involve one month of uh, Corrin salary to mm -hmm. be paid, not in this amount of money, but out of a grant which has already been approved for the city by the city council and which has a vacancy in the management position which you would fill. Okay, and just to, to refresh my memory, um, I remember the grant coming forward, but that was just for this year. So is there a guarantee that the grant will be picked up next year? Uh, I don't recall whether this grant is a multi-year grant or not, but it makes no difference with respect to this particular issue because the amount of money that is being used to pay corn for this fiscal year out of this grant is already there. Okay, but my concern is that um, it'll kind of be like 11. You know, we agree to pay it, or actually, that, that one, a, a number 12, I'm sorry, um, it was, like you said, disapproved, but it was paid anyway, and now you're asking for the money back. So that's, that's my concern, well, that if you pay this out now and it doesn't wash out or something, then, then you'll be asking for money back. Well, I think the question really then becomes uh, whether you're talking about this fiscal year or next fiscal year. If you're talking about this fiscal year, if the city council doesn't take some kind of action to increase the mayor's budget for salaries right. for this fiscal year, These folks the won't mayor will have to take some kind of action in order to stay within the budget that's been appropriated for him. I don't know what action he'll take. He has a number which are available to him. Mm -hmm. He could lay people off. He could furlough people. But something would have to be done because what's appropriate right now isn't sufficient to pay that staff for the rest of the fiscal year. So he'll have to make a decision. For next year, I think I agree with Councilor Stewart. I don't know what the mayor's proposal is going to be for his staff salaries for next year. I don't know whether he'll continue to advocate for paying a newbie from the cable fund to the extent that he's paying for this year or mm -hmm. for a higher percentage. All mm -hmm. of that is up in the air. But what's in front of you now is a request for $23,000 in order that the balance of the fiscal year will have enough money to pay the mayor's staff as it's currently constituted. Had those additional people not been hired, would, would this be a request or would there have been enough money had those couple of extra folks not been hired? It depends upon what salaries the mayor had decided to pay to the people he put on his staff because, you know, that it's, it's people times dollars that they're getting paid. Okay. All right. And if, I think if my math is correct, Councilor Stewart, I think it's 0 0.00006054. <laughs> Even smaller than I thought. <laughs> you can check Good that skills. later. My math isn't that, isn't that great, but thank you. Thank you, sir. Councilor, <laughs> any other questions? Motion to approve. Second. Second. Motion has been made. Properly second. Favorable recommendation to the full city council. Hand vote. All in favor? All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Councilor. Uh, Madam Clerk, number 14, please. Order that the City Council hereby establishes the application fee required by the ordinance to be $1,500, regulating the locations of medical marijuana cultivation, harvesting, dispensing, and other related activities as allowed by the Commonwealth of Mass. Invited Anthony J. Zioli, City Clerk, Martin S. Brophy, Treasurer, Tax Collector, Philip Nazarella, City Solicitor. Mr. Chairman. Gossel. If I might, Mr. Chairman. Um, if I'm not mistaken, this is in regards to the uh, medical marijuana um, issue. That's correct. Which is before us, and as, as all counselors know, they have a uh, 
copy of um, somewhat of the ordinance, and, and as you all know, we passed that ordinance just uh, at the uh, end of last year. But also in the ordinance, um, you'll also recall that there was supposed to be a, a fee that we had to um, establish at the same time. And in concurring with uh, our city clerk, Mr. Zioli, I, I asked him to, to do some investigative work um, just to see what other communities had already started to put in place in regards to um, fee. And um, he was also looking at the fact that some communities were looking at, um, at, at the facilities and using even a square footage type of a, uh, a fee as a situation. But here, um, we had just talked and, and, and sort of started to uh, figure that the establishment of $1,500 would be, you know, something that would be adequate. I know if the city clerk naturally wants to chime in further, he can, and I know our legal counsel is here as well. Um, but that's why this is before us this evening, and I think we have to do our due diligence as we did to put the ordinance on the books, that we, we have to keep up with the fact that we did um, stipulate that we were going to establish a, a fee in regards to, um, you know, the... Uh, uh, business coming, uh, you know, to the city, as well as they still have to go through a permitting process through the Zoning Board of Appeals as well. So um, that's why this is before us this evening, and, and then I'll just uh, yield to uh, the clerk. I know he had stood up. I, I don't know if he was going to say something. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Council. Mr. Clerk? Okay, right here. Absolutely. There's certainly not uh, anything else that I can add to that. It is a one-time fee. It's an application fee. And it's a requirement. The $1,500 was established through some of the, uh, in connection with some of the communities that are working on these fees. And uh, certainly for a uh, $3.9 million business that will take effect eventually, here a $1,500 one-time one fee is not exorbitant. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Council Dubois. Um, I would like to ask a couple questions of um, Mr. Nassarella and Mr. Um, Condon, if I could. And then um, if any of my fellow counselors have questions, of course, you have every right in the world to ask them. So, I, you know, it even <laughs> goes without saying. But at the end of everyone's questions, I hope that you would give me the courtesy of postponing this until the next Finance Committee meeting. I'm going to make that motion unless one of you do. Um, I've been doing some due diligence um, and looking into it, and I think that there are possibilities for us to be able to um, get more of a licensing fee and I am not prepared to forward that this evening but I have had some conversations with other municipalities who are um, speculating on getting more money than this so I can't promise anything but I don't think waiting two more weeks would hurt anything so I'm just going to start out with that and then um, ask Mr. Condon if he has looked into this at all. Council, does anybody object to have Mr. Condon or Attorney Nazarello? They're not invited guests, no objections? Sorry. Mr. Condon, thank you. Have you looked into this at all? Uh, no, Council. This is the first I've seen it. I wasn't invited on the agenda item tonight. I'll simply say anything you're able to do to raise revenues for the city in terms of fees, I'm all in favor of as long as it's Ten thousand dollars? How's that? <laughs> it might make up the twenty-three thousand dollars. <laughs> no problem. Council Rodriguez, you make it. Uh, Council Dubai, are you done? I just had a couple more questions, if that's oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I you apologize. And I, I don't have any more questions of you. I Thank just you. want to ask a similar question to Mr. Brophy, if I could. Hi, Mr. Brophy. Thank you for coming here tonight. And I'm sorry that I am going to try to postpone this, so I hope that you would be so kind as to come back. Um, but have you looked into this? And I have not. So would you also think it would be a good idea to postpone to give you some time to look into it? Your prerogative, if you can do that, absolutely. Yeah. And could, do you think I could make a request of you to do some l looking into it I'm as well? I'm not sure I'm going to have time right now, Council. Yeah. I've got uh, utility true. bills due and over 54,000 excise bills out there. So um, okay. it's I think not that's something fair. I'm going to have yeah. time to look into. So that's fair. Thank you very much for your time tonight. Mr. Nestorella, were you a able to look into this at all? or? No, I, okay, I did not. Okay, that's fine. Do you think this is something that your office might be interested in looking into, or do, would you rather us just take the bull by the horns like we did with the zoning ordinance? I think it would be outside the scope of what we would normally do. Yeah. I would tend to defer to the, the city clerk's analysis of it, and if it's sure. consistent and fair and reasonable with other communities of this nature, 
I would be comfortable in relying upon that, but uh, again, as Mr. Brophy said, it's your prerogative if you wish to examine it further. But it's clearly not something within the scope of what the, the law department would do, unless you were willing to increase our staff a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was lucky enough to get um, a, a spreadsheet from um, uh, the, the planning office who has um, made some inquiries into other communities and from that I sprang board into calling people in other communities that I know that their city solicitors and their um, some of their staff members who are doing these types of permitting so I'm kind of honing honing her spreadsheet and I'll share it with my fellow counselors um, and make it a matter of record uh, I guess I can bring it down to the city clerk's office or email it over tomorrow and then maybe we can go from there so thank you you're welcome Clerk, through the chair, if I may, uh, I'd like the legislative council to get up and elaborate on this. There's a serious question about applications and the fee being uh, submitted at that time. Ray right. Gilday. Thank you. First of all, the, the fee is an application fee, and the fee is supposed to be reasonably related to the services that may be required. It's not necessarily intended to generate revenue for the city, but rather to cover the costs and expenses that the community involved <coughs> occurs in processing the application. The way the ordinance was drafted that was passed by the council, it requires an application fee to be in an amount to be established by the Brockton City Council and said fee shall be submitted with the application. Yes. So until the council sets the fee, I believe applicants have been told they can't submit an application. Yes. And I know there is a desire to move this process forward so the establishment can locate itself in Bridgewater and start generating tax revenue. So the council should consider that delaying this would delay the start of the process to get the first facility in the city approved. Yes, and just to that point, um, we have, I agree with you, and I have been speaking to um, staff in City Hall, the building inspector, and other staff members in City Hall around this fee issue. And so I just think that two more weeks when DeVal Patrick himself has said that the permits aren't finalized wouldn't necessarily hurt anyone. You should just be aware, though, that the next deadline for submission to the Zoning Board of Appeals is March 13th. So explain that a little bit more. So what's the date we're looking at? So if we were to postpone it until the next Finance Committee meeting, that would be the 17th. St. Patrick's Day, Councilor. So that 18th. Would, <laughs> that would delay um, if the applicant intended to go before the Zoning Board, which I believe they do, it would delay the application. If you postpone this. Well, it's a one-shot deal, so I would like to make sure that we get it done right, even if he has to wait. And he's a pretty nice gentleman, so I don't know if he would necessarily mind. I'm still going to uh, motion to postpone. Thank you, Attorney. If I could have a second. Second. Okay. Is that motion right now? Uh, on the motion. Corner. Oh, we had Council Rodriguez first, yeah, and then Council Stewart, then Council. No, th thank you, Mr. Chairman. I um, I know that the. Uh, the state is going through this process of licensing these uh, sites throughout the Commonwealth, but I, I honestly believe that the uh, the licensing fee for each of these organizations that are actually looking for a license is in the uh, over over thirty thousand dollars per license, in the thirty thousand plus dollars per license. So, and I believe there's only uh, a handful of uh, licenses being granted in the Commonwealth. Therefore, I think I believe there's only one in the city of Brockton. And, I, and I, I see absolutely nothing wrong with basically uh, uh, cranking up the, the application fee in the sense uh, if these organizations can apply for uh, state licenses of 30,000 plus just to get a license to do so, um, then I don't see anything wrong with us. Uh, and, and I have a question for our, count, for our legal counsel in the sense, can we, uh, can we amend this order? Do we have the ability to amend the order to, um, so we can move on it, or does it have to be physically, we have to kind of uh, send it back and, and kind of rework it? No, you, you certainly could amend it, but if you're thinking of amending it to really crank it up, I think you have to give consideration to it's an application fee yeah. to deal with the review. It's not, it's not a revenue-generating fee. 
and the state did require application fees, but there was a much more onerous review process by the Commonwealth than would be undertaken by the city with respect to an application for a license here. But I believe that the, uh, the state actually has said that they have not licensed anyone to open up these, uh, th these dispensaries, but yet at the same time they have committed to certain licenses. So when you're saying it's an application fee, are you saying that it's an application fee that's open to the public? I mean, for anybody to apply to, or just those folks that were actually granted licenses? It's an application fee under the ordinance that the city council passed. That's all it is. I Someone that applies is going to have to apply for a special permit and pay $160 to the Zoning Board of Appeals like they would for any other application fee because there are additional requirements contained in this ordinance for review by various departments, there's an additional application fee. But the applicant itself, the person who's applying, or the, the entity that's actually applying for a license, is it those entities that were granted licenses by the state? The, the, the ordinance does not say you need to have a license in hand, but certainly I would believe that is something the Zoning Board of Appeals would take into consideration when they're considering any application before them. Uh, let me ask you another question. The, um, the group that's actually um, supposedly was granted a license to uh, open a dispensary here in the city, have they filed any sort of license with the city? Point of information? Have they filed any license? Uh, I mean, any, uh, any uh, in applications? They that, that's the point. They can't file the application but it's, until this the is the same. What, what, what I'm trying to get to is that when I, when I hear some uh, a line that's been put into place for an application fee, I'm thinking that it's, um, it, it's like you're, you're putting in a li uh, an application line for s anybody to apply for a license for, to operate something. But this is very specific because the... Uh, the state actually determines how many licenses are going to be granted in the, uh, in the Commonwealth, and those individuals have to get a license through the state in order to, op to operate this dispensary. So it's, it's, we already know who the person might be or w what the entity might be, so I don't see anything wrong with basically make, putting in a, a requirement where there's a little more um, resources coming into the city to, uh, to approve the, uh, the application, because we already know it's not like you're, you're asking people to, uh, for a specific fee to open up a, a dealership or something where you're going to have various applicants and people coming in looking for licenses. This is something that's very specific to, uh, to an item that we're talking about. And it's, and it's something that we don't to you know, totally control because the state actually um, provides these licenses. So if they're already coming to us with a license in hand, in the sense, by the Commonwealth, why couldn't we just basically say, well, in order for you to pro for in order for the city to process this license that you that you've gotten already it's going to cost you x y and z dollars that's what i'm saying well that's what the order seeks to accomplish right but the that's why the level I'm that you set the fee at is up to the council but, but can just in in considering what amount you charge i again remind you you need to keep it reasonably related to the services that are being provided but it's not like we have a, a ton of, uh, you know, marijuana dispensing facilities all over the all over the city. This is a one, a one facility that we have going for us. So, in, in the, in there's the nothing to kind of compare it to. That's what I'm trying to. That's what I'm trying to get to. And you're not going to have two or three of them. You only have one. It doesn't matter whether it's a liquor license, a marijuana license, or anything. It, it, the type of license is not the issue. The issue is that it's simply an application fee. So you, you can't charge them a million dollars because you think they're going to make four million dollars. Your fee needs to be related to the service that's provided. And in the ordinance that you have, there are fees in the future. There are fees for review by the fire department and by the police department twice a year. So there are ongoing fees. So this fee is simply limited for the applicant to come in, file an application, and to cover the cost that would be incurred by the city for um, example the police department to review the security plan that's required by this ordinance and for the fire department to review plans that are submitted by this ordinance required by this ordinance are the um, other licenses that we provide for 
liquor stores and other facilities, uh, what are those fees like? Because I'm not really up to par on that. Is there anything that's close to those fees that we charge, or are they re a little less? There's a whole host of fees from milk licenses to, I, I don't know what all the fees are, but there are not many fees that are $1,500 for an application. There are license fees. There are fees for holding a license, but that's not the fee we're talking about here. The ordinance that you passed didn't require an annual license fee. It okay. simply required an application fee. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As a point of information, um, the Ordinance Committee last year tried to vet this out, um, and myself and Mr. Cruz and Monaghan was the, uh, the chair and Mr. Ian Airy. Um, we, we, we took, uh, we really, kind of what Attorney Gilday said, we took into account uh, the fair and reasonable, the time incurred. Um, the standard is unjust enrichment. So if somebody comes here and makes 10 million bucks, you, as the attorney said, you can't charge them a million. So we wanted it to be fair and reasonable, but we also didn't want to penalize the city because it's going to be manpower and woman power reviewing it. So we came up with that 1,500, but it's up to the will of the council. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President. Council Dubois. Um, just to say that I, I forgot to mention this. I had had some conversations with Mr. Kassiri about this, and I think that maybe next time, if it is postponed, that we should ask him to come in so he can speak for himself, because he speaks for himself very well. And he expressed some concern about um, needing to have um, maybe consultant come in and look at the application and concern about different aspects that may be costs that we didn't factor into this 1500 and also when you look at some other communities they're doing their um, their fee by square feet so it would be nice, and especially if there are some new counselors that maybe don't even have a, you know, working knowledge of the fee structure, for them to be able to give, an, give a little time to review it. So thank, you, thank you, Councilor. Thank you. Councilor Stewart, followed by Councilor Barnes, followed by Councilor Cruz. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairperson. A question for my colleague through, through the chair, because um, I agree with that we should probably postpone this and do a little bit more work on it. It also sounds to me as if we're talking about two different types of uh, fees or sh um, one is an application fee which un I understand should basically be based on the amount of work required to process the application but it also seems to me that we should be considering then some type of licensing fee that where that's where we're trying to generate additional revenue and, and I cannot remember if that's already in the ordinance or not a, a, a license fee that could have a higher price tag or not I think that that could be a conversation for the future, but talking about this application fee, I, all I can say is that I would like more time to review it and to feel comfortable with the $1,500. That's all I can say. Okay. I agree with that. And then, um, Council, the just, just bear in mind the state issues a license, not the city, okay. not the municipality. Not this for fee is for an application for the city of Brockton. The city of Brockton doesn't issue the license, it's the Commonwealth of Mass. And what about the, the siting of the um, the okay, I think, so I think it's worth postponing, and I, I agree with that move. Thank you, Mr. President. Council Bonds, Council Cruz, or do you want to call a vote? Do you want to talk? Do you have yes. a question? If okay, I could Council. just share something really quickly, just sitting here listening, um, I just kind of went online and, and did a little bit of research on what Councillor Dubois was saying about other communities and their licensing fees. Um, a report did come up from the Marijuana Policy Project out of Washington, D.C., um, and it states in part, Non-refundable fees for dispensary applications generally range from $1,000 to $5,000 with registration or annual fees typically between $5,000 and $20,000. Um, and that's just in part. And then they have on here, you know, all of these other kinds of things and the fact that it's taxed and the argument on that. So I, I don't know if that, that plays into what you're saying, but I mean, it, it might not be a bad idea to postpone this just to see. And, and I agree with um, actually what Attorney Gilday said, because it also actually goes on and it says, um, <clears throat> while medical marijuana dispensary fees should not be so low that they encourage frivolous applications, it is important that they are not prohibitively high since costs may be passed on to the patients and medical marijuana businesses are generally unable to get bank loans due to concerns about the federal law. So um, those are just, just something I just wanted to share. Great information. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Cruz. Yeah, just um, as Mr. Gilday told us, 
uh, and again, Councilor Stewart and I had talked about this, but we don't give the licenses out. What we really need to do before this, and we, I do, we do want to table this, is each one of these departments needs to give us an idea of what kind of time is involved in, in uh, and I think we're going to find out the $1,500 or $1,600 doesn't cover the time put in by those departments. Uh, but uh, that's what we need for two weeks from now is uh, an idea from these departments what kind of time and manpower they think they're going to need to d review these plans come up with a dollar amount against that and uh, and then come up with the license. Council, the, is that a formal request? Uh, uh, yes, please. Yeah, but... Uh, what are the departments? Uh, let's see, we have... Building uh, department, right? Police, uh, Board of Health, Fire Safety, uh, Fire Plan. Two different plans for the uh, police department to, to look at, so... Uh, planning? Uh, Board of Health. I said Board of Health. Uh, does it go to planning? Zoning. They manage the license. Well, the zoning fee is already, they pay a zoning fee, got that. zoning board fee, so. Building department. Building department. And the building department, so. That are, that's, that's a motion, Council Cruz? Uh, well, I believe, there's, you already have a motion, I believe, don't you? Yes, yes could I have that on to mine? A motion to postpone to the next FENCOM, which is uh, the 17th. 18th. St. Patrick's Day. 17th. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be here on the 17th. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You have to wear green. It's not optional. It's mandatory. Oh. <laughs> uh, Councilors, there's a motion on the floor to postpone to the next FENCOM. The stipulation that we're going to ask those respective uh, departments to give us a cost analysis. Uh, all in favor of that motion to postpone the next FENCOM. All opposed, that motion carries. <laughs> Madam Clerk, number 15. Resolved that Mayor William Carpenter, CFO John Condon, City Solicitor Philip Nazrella, and Mr. Mark Lindy, Executive Director of the Broxton Community Access, come before the Finance Committee to discuss the cable agreement and all terms, rights, and obligations defined therein between the City of Rockford and the VCA, and to further produce and discuss any and all amendments, including but not limited to a certain memorandum of agreement and or memorandum of understanding between the City and VCA, invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Philip Nosrella, City Solicitor, and or his assistant, Mark Lindy, Executive Director of Brockton Community Access. Council, just as a reminder, uh, we briefly discussed this. We opened it up. Uh, Council uh, for, the, for the City, Attorney Nosrella, had submitted a letter. He had a conflict that evening. The Mayor was here. Mr. Lindy was here. Mr. Condon was here. Again, this is uh, a resolve filed jointly by all of us here. Um, just a point of information. Mr. Condon, good evening. Good evening. Uh, if I might make a, a quick opening statement, and maybe it will clarify a few things, and maybe, and maybe it won't. Uh, basically, uh, up until about 2008, the cable uh, license agreement uh, with the city and the cable company provided that the license fees went directly to the Community Cable Corporation. And then that, that license agreement was renegotiated under the uh, uh, Mayor Harrington's administration. I believe Councilor Rodriguez participated in that. Uh, attorney, uh, City Solicitor Jim D'Ambrose was also a participant. I think there was an outside attorney hired. That new license agreement provided that the revenues became directly uh, attributed to the City of Brockton. Now, subsequent to that, there was a memorandum of understanding apparently executed between the City and the BCCT. I had a copy of the license agreement that I reviewed. I didn't keep it. It's about that thick. But the license agreement, the only part that was pertinent to me was the fact that the license fees would now be coming directly to the city, so those revenues had to be estimated. What I didn't realize was that there was a memorandum of understanding between the city and the Community Cable Corporation, which provided that 75 percent of those license fees would be dedicated to the Community Cable Corporation for their operating budget, and the balance would be uh, attributed to uh, uh, reserve for, for capital spending. So after that process was initiated, we began to budget the amount of the support of the BCCT in the mayor's budget. And what was budgeted uh, after, after a year or so became $550,000. To my understanding, that was what was required by the uh, uh, discussions between the cable group, uh, BCCT, and the city. And we appropriated $550,000 every year, and I never heard anything different from any mayor or from any uh, anybody from the board, and I don't believe it was, don't believe it was the board's uh, or the Mark Lindy's obligation to get anything to me, just that that appropriation was made on the mayor's request and the city council approved it. But what we established in order to accomplish uh, this basic purpose was this revolving fund. 
So the revolving fund, which is approved every year by the City Council, states that the first $550,000 is an appropriated general fund receipt. That full appropriation is made in the Mayor's budget to the BCCT for an operating budget. And the balance then goes to a revolving fund. The revolving fund has a restriction on it, no more than 200, as approved every year by the City Council, no more than 250,000 each year can be spent and it has to be spent on cable related activities. To the extent that more than that is uh, uh, deposited into the fund or that isn't spent, that fund, so long as it's reauthorized by the City Council, continues to build up to a balance today of about a million three hundred thousand. So now uh, with uh, Councillor Rodriguez having been elected to the City Council, becomes aware to me that there is a memorandum of understanding which says 75% of the cable revenues are supposed to be dedicated to the operating budget of the BCCT. We haven't been doing that. It's been a little bit short and the amount of the shortfall has been growing as the years have gone on because now the amount of money being generated by the cable license fee is over 900000 It's one of the reasons that the balance in that revolving fund has grown to that uh, level of about $1,300,000. So, my discussions earlier with uh, Mark Lindy, and I believe the mayor has had the same kind of discussions, have resulted in first is going to be a substantial increase in next year's operating budget, which will be in front of the city council, to get more money for the operating budget into Mr. Lindy's uh, organization. Second, we're going to look at trying to reconcile what was received and what was uh, allocated to his budget to see if we can't figure out the amount to which he was shortchanged over the years because some of that amount of money has been shortchanged. I don't think it's, it's huge. There will still be a substantial balance in that million three hundred thousand. The third thing is we will come back next year with a similar kind of arrangement proposed to you except that the amount that's in the appropriation will be greater and we will propose a revolving fund and to address Councillor um, Dubois concerns, how that fund gets used can be restricted by the City Council. So I don't think we need to abolish the revolving fund, but if you're concerned about its use and either the annual restriction or the purpose of the restriction, that's in your domain to, to take a look at that. I don't see any problem with that. There hasn't been anything here which, in my opinion, is, has been intended to be anything other than trying to do the right thing by the money coming in and the cable corporation. And uh, the last point I would make is, in my opinion, there's nothing in the license which prohibits the use of the money to pay staff. There's nothing in the agreement with the Brockton Community Cable Corporation which prohibits the license fees to be used to pay staff so long as they're getting their 75 percent at BCCT and there's nothing in the state laws that prohibit the use of a revolving fund to pay staff so long as you're paying the benefits as well. So my personal opinion is we're all okay with all of that except that BCCT hasn't received the same amount of money that it should have got over the years and Mark Lindy and I and the mayor in agreement will try to rectify that in the next few months. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Bonds. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Condon. I just have a question. Um, you said that you, or from reviewing the documents that you've looked at so far, that um, cable has been shortchanged. Th th those BCCT, no. yeah. BCCT is cable. Yeah, well, I, not Comcast. The, the no, the us, the us. Community cable, yes. Access, okay. So that they've been shortchanged right. um, over the years, and you're going to look into a way to rectify that with them? Right. Okay. Just so I can be clear, the $250,000 limit that you can spend out of the revolving fund, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Okay. Is that where you're going to look to to make cable whole? Well, yes, because the ex to the extent that they didn't get 75% of the cable license fees, mm -hmm. that non-payment to them would have ended up in that revolving fund. So that's the appropriate place to make place to make them whole. Okay. So now, since city, the city didn't benefit from it, it went to the revolving fund. Okay. So since there's a $250,000 spending limit, yeah. what, I guess for lack of a better term, at a time, do you anticipate the short change is more than that? Yes. Okay, so how will they be made whole if you have a limit of the $250,000? Will that be paid over time or? Well, first of all, the $250,000 is the limit for this year this fiscal year so mm -hmm. the revolving fund proposal for next year could contain a higher limit and it might be written a little bit differently than the order that comes before the city council every year okay. because we'll have something to make up. Second in terms of making them up it's clear that 
the BCCT, despite not getting the amount of money that the MOU entitled them to, was able to have an operating budget and continue during all these years. I mean, what they're short is not capital money, but what they would have liked to have spent on an operating budget. I don't know how they would have spent it differently. You can ask uh, Mr. Lindy that question. Mm -hmm. But my suggestion would be that some of it will be made up this year, and then we'll take a look once we've had a chance to sit down and, and pull these different uh, sources of funding together and take a look at it. We'll make a recommendation to you next year as to how next year's budget will be funded both for operating budget, which mm -hmm. will be a higher amount than the 550, mm -hmm. and some amount of expenditure out of the revolving fund out of that balance, which is about a million three, as I said, to try to make it whole for both capital and some kind of catch up. Okay, and I'm not sure actually my next question is for you or for Mr. Lindy. Would this be time for Mr. Lindy to come up or should I wait? Mr. Lindy. Good evening, Councillors. Good evening. Um, okay. With all of the new, uh, I guess, you know, TV watching dish and all this other stuff that they have and, you know, the antennas and you can buy, you know, a thing at Walmart and you can get the genie and all that other stuff. With all of these new things, um, I'm not sure if people are kind of buying into the Comcast thing anymore. Um, and if the, if the viewership is down or the membership subscriptions are down with Comcast, does this, in, in projection, will this cut down on the money that they're able to provide to your service? And, and how, do, how, do, how do we fix that or how do we think ahead? You're, you're exactly right, Councillor. It could potentially go down. To my surprise, in looking at the subscriber numbers, they've stayed pretty constant. Okay. Brockton has about 23,000 cable subscribers. It's been consistent all the way back. Okay. But what you need to know is about 60% of the public has cable TV. <coughs> the other 40 does not. The 40%, about 20% of that 40% is DISH, Direct TV, something like that. Mm -hmm. And there's about 20% where people just can't afford the rates. Mm -hmm. uh, the rates, there's no senior rate, there's right. no discounted rate. Right. Back in the day when you had analog, you could just hook 22 channels to your local TV without a converter box. Mm -hmm. And most of the, a lot of the senior citizens on fixed cost had that service. You can't touch it for even close to $40. And all the revenues that go into the cable funding are subscriber fees, advertising dollars that Comcast gets, uh, pay-per-view revenues, things like that. And those are up. What's excluded from any of the fees that the city can collect are the internet revenues and the um, telephone revenues by federal law. And what happened is Comcast kind of discounted the cable price in order to bundle and package the deal for the other ones. So we are concerned. That's one of the reasons we don't put a lot of the content on the internet. We put the council and the school committee and the FinCom on the internet because that is, to me, public domain. But when it comes to like the high school sports, the only place you can get it is to see it on, on Channel 98. Mm -hmm. the, the public programs that our volunteers work so hard to produce, that's exclusive cable content. And Comcast probably doesn't want to see our product that the volunteers do and the staff do on another platform because right. the cable subscribers are paying for it. All of this money we're talking about and all of these issues, this is subscriber money. This isn't taxpayer dollars or anything. Mm -hmm. This is what people pay. When you look at that franchise-related cost on your cable bill, that's where it comes from. And if you do the quick math, you were pretty good with math before, you can <laughs> figure out exactly what Comcast is, is making. Netting, right. They take bad debt out of it. So there's one of the quarters. Usually if there's debt that isn't paid by the subscriber and it's dismissed, that comes out of the fees but they provide a very specific calculation formula. The city, the mayor's office would get a letter that would say, this is what your check is for the 4%, which is what is under the contract. Out of that 4%, it does a, like a little analysis, and then there was a copy of the check. During the time of this license, under previous administrations, let me make it really clear, it wasn't this mayor that caused any of this. This happened under previous administrations where the monies weren't received. This mayor's only been in office, you know, two months, and he hmm. brought it up during the campaign right in the middle of a debate and said, I'm going to try to fix this. So this is what's going on, and this is what we're trying to do. And basically, just, you know, not specifically to answer your question, but our mission is to continue to be an effective community media center. We're willing to partner the city with the city 
to that end. We've always done this. And when I did, I actually wrote my thesis when I got my master's degree at Fitchburg State on successful public access. And one of my friends, Steve Roy, who runs, runs Whitman Hanson Cable Access, his favorite line is, how do you turn money into programming? It's people, facilities, and equipment. Now, luckily, we've had volunteers over the years to help supplement that to utilize the monies we were provided and still provide the services, but it was a pretty delicate balancing act. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You good, Council? Almost there. Thank you. Council Rodriguez. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Lindy, for being here. Uh, I think, um, I mean, my name has been brought up several times because I used to... Uh, play a, a different role uh, when we first started talking about this contract and, uh, and the cable uh, here in the city. I think just a point of clarification so that my other, my fellow counselors can actually kind of um, see where we are coming from. And, and I want to also voice out the fact that I actually worked on this, uh, on this uh, contract. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, st I still have about four or five versions of this thing in a disk somewhere that I saved. Um, but I know that it's clear that um, that the money is in the city, but the reason why the money is in the city is because the cable contract is a contract that's signed between the cable company and the issuing author uh, authority, and the issuing authority is the city of Brockton, and in that case, it's represented by whoever the mayor is at the time. Now. Also, you got to look at it this way because the full amount that actually is uh, negotiated in the contract is to be divided between three um, entities in a sense. Brockton Community Cable, Brockton Public Schools, and Massasoit. Those are the three entities involved. That's why it made very little sense to give the, the entire monies to one of the entities when you've got two other entities on the side. That's why during the, uh, the Harrington administration, we decided that it would be best since there was the, issues, the issue of we're going to get a little more money because of our negotiation skills and arm twisting or whatever the deal was, we were going to get some extra money. And what do you do with that extra money? What, what do you do with the extra money? And in talking with Mark, uh, when, when Mark was, uh, well, Mark's still there, but when we were in office, is basically we found out that their um, annual budget at the time was about $550,000. So it was, it was safe to establish a, um, a budget item because we had to front the money. We had to front the money to BCA because that, the money that came from cable came in quarterly payments. So you had to front the money, and that's why it was established that we're going to start that account at $550,000. Once the funds are established and build up into that uh, revolving account or the accounts that the city all of a sudden had established, then the 75% would go into effect. The 75% because the other 25% was to be put aside for equipment and other cable-related expenses that the other folks had as well, too. It wasn't just solely for BCA, but it was also for the public schools. And I think, I believe it was in 2009 that the last time that they actually received any equipment money, and I think it was just before we left, mm -hmm. just before the uh, Harrington administration was over, that they got the last, the last um, monies to basically purchase equipment. But we also made sure that the schools got some, and... BCA, BCA got some, and Massasoit got some. You know, you're, you're correct, Councillor. Um, I, I don't mean to interrupt, but Massasoit has never received any funding. They Rockton, never. Ended up Rockton Public Schools did, and BCA did, but Massasoit did okay. not. Okay, uh, but th that's the reason why that was established, and so that uh, I want to make sure that it's very clear that it's not like we took them, you know, we took BCA out of the loop because they were getting the monies, and all of a sudden the city was getting the money. It's just that. There was a lot more money coming in, and I, I believe the first year that we actually uh, had received, the contract was signed in 2008. Mm -hmm. It went into effect in 2008. In 2009, we're out of office. So that first year, I believe the amount of money that actually came into the city was somewhere around $700,000 plus. Thousand mm -hmm. So if their budget is only five fifty, that other two-something has to be put, had to be put away somewhere, and that's why the revolving account was created. 
um, my my whole reasoning behind saying what I'm saying is that I don't believe the issue is the revolving account. The revolving account has to be there because there's going to be some monies that need to be put somewhere in order to operate the other obligations that we have. So it's not the elimination of the um, of the revolving account that's in question, at least in my opinion. What's in question is how do we make this whole in terms of making sure. And I actually had addressed Mr. Uh, Mr. Lindy some time back and saying, you know what, there's an MOU in place because I remember working on the MOU that says that you're going to get 75 percent. So go into the mayor's office and demand your 75 percent. You know, and uh, I don't know exactly what transpired in that particular time frame, but the issue is that you've got those funds and those funds are intended for your organization and also the organizations that are associated with the cable, um, the cable company, I mean with the cable provision here in the city. In terms of getting the cable company involved, uh, I know Councilor Dubar actually had mentioned asking the cable company folks to come in. It, frankly, it has nothing to do with them. They signed a contract to, with the city saying uh, we're going to, and besides, the rate payers pay that percentage. It's not the cable company. The cable company is not really giving us anything. It's the citizens of the city of Brockton that actually pay this rate. So uh, to be honest with you, I think the only folks that we should talk to are the rate payers, you know, and making sure that they understand that their funds are being spent and spent properly. So. Uh, as far as the cable company, they signed a contract with the city for the percentages that they signed, and that contract was a 10-year contract that's due probably in another four years or so, four or five years from now. Four. Four. So 2018. So it has to be renegotiated again. But what's already in place, it, to me, it was done and done right, I mean, because we actually were able to establish you know, a, a decent operating budget for BCA, and also put some monies aside to actually help the other uh, organizations that are, uh, are providing those kinds of services here in the city. So I wanted to make sure that at least that we had some clarification on the 550 first and foremost, that the fact that the contract was not um, in the past, the funds used to go because they were, I mean, the contract prior to the contract that we signed was for 300 and something thousand dollars a year. No, it, it was Four twenty-five. They fronted, fronted five hundred thousand, and then in the back end, it was three thirteen for the last four years. Yeah, in the back end, it was three hundred and something thousand dollars. Now all of a sudden, that's growing to seven hundred thousand dollars. So we had to come up with a way of kind of managing the, those additional funds that were coming in, and that's why it was put into that, uh, that into that revolving account uh, with the stipulation that it was going to be used for cable-related um, expenses here in the city including some work that needs to be done in this chamber in terms of uh, updating uh, some lighting and some cable cameras and some other things that we need to do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Stewart. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Uh, if I can have a little bit of latitude here. So uh, as a nonprofit, BCA has the, you're not precluded from researching grant opportunities, correct, to augment no. your operating budget? No. And have you been able to? Bring in additional um, revenues through grant writing? At one point, we were told if we did that, we would probably be cut appropriately. So we decided not to get into grant opportunities. But by the, the city? A by previous whom? administration. So despite you had an agreement of 75%, there was an understanding that if um, you raise additional monies that... Mm -hmm. well, I, I think that should be revisited because I, I just believe that I know that other... Right. Uh, institutions like yours in the cities are doing some really cutting edge, innovative work uh, online, um, and some of that funding is coming through grant opportunities that they're generating locally. You're so maybe that's a conversation worth having with the mayor. You're 100 percent right, and the mayor's already brought it up with me. Okay. And then secondly, I am. I, mean, I think it's wise. I'm, I'm not in favor of restricting how the revolving fund could be used, and I, if the if, in fact, the mayor's office has been innovative enough and entrepreneurial enough to take advantage of that funding to provide additional staff for residents, as long as it's within the boundaries of that agreement, I think then we should ensure that the administration has that kind of latitude. Uh, but, but thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Thank you, Council. Uh, Council Dubois. Oh, I'm sorry, Council Monaghan first. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, did originally all the money just go to, uh, to the cable, to the BCCT? For the first two contracts it did, for a 15-year contract and a 10-year contract. Um, I'm not going to get into the 
wisdom of whether it went through the city or not. One thing I do know that if it does go through the city, I believe there's liability on the city's part for content. That is not something that our organization was in favor at the time, but it was a, it was a compromise. So the agreement was made between the city and you for no, this coming the up? original agreement No, was not that. I'm talking about after, like that the, the, uh, Council the, Rodriguez the, was talking the, about. The memorandum of understanding was based on a previous memorandum of understanding under the original, the second contract, when Mayor Units was in office. The difference between the second contract and the third contract, the second contract had locked set figures like Moses was, Councilor Rodriguez was referring to. This contract didn't, and it added a Section 7 that talked about all of the funding going to, directly to the City of Brockton in quarterly payments. It used to be an annual payment on or about March 15th after Comcast or the previous company, Continental, closed out their books and did all the calculations. My check in 1996 under the original agreement, the original first license was 545,000. It was a 5% figure. The second license limited us to 425 a year, and we chose to front load it for the first six years to the tune of 500,000, and then we went to 313 for the last four years. Because the contract was not renewed on time, it took an additional year and a half almost to negotiate that contract. We had to use any reserve funding we have, which we exhausted, Okay, and we just made it to that April 2008 date, getting the memorandum of understanding for 2008 in June. We didn't even get a quarterly payment for the first quarter of 2008. So, I mean, I have some records because I had gotten some of those letters that had that information in terms of what the 4% funding was, but after that, I didn't get the letters anymore. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Dubois. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Lindy, I'm not going to push you on this. So, you know, it's an opinion. So if you don't have an opinion, just tell me you don't have an opinion. Sure. But do you have an opinion on the utilization of these monies to pay for city side staff members? It's a tough position that we're in. I yeah. don't have an opinion on that sure. because if the state law allows for it, yep. as the city solicitor said, then there's nothing I can do, opinion or not, as sure. to whether or not it happens. I think that's a fair answer. And so um, I think at this time, I'm not going to have any questions until I get the letter from the solicitor and I contact the cable company, which I am going to do for my own, I feel, a fiduciary responsibility to do that. So thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Councilors, we're going to move a vote now. Anybody have any questions? Entertain a motion. Motion to recommend favorably. Second. Motion is made properly second favorable recommendation back to the full city council. All in favor of that motion, all opposed, that motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Lindy. Thank you, councilors. Councilors, does anybody have any uh, moments of personal privilege? Councilor Cruz. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I received a call before the meeting tonight. Uh, one of our usual attendees, Lieutenant Gormley, couldn't be here tonight, but he wanted to remind all the councilors and the public that this Monday, uh, March 10th at 10 o'clock in the City Hall Rotunda, the uh, firefighters local will be uh, having the Strand Theater Memorial Ceremony, and the public is invited, and all of, uh, everybody here, and then followed by a breakfast at the Union Hall on Perkins Avenue. Thank you, Councilor. Thank Cruz. you. Any other kinds of personal privilege, Councilor? Yes, sir. Bonds. Um, if I may, I just wanted to uh, just invite everyone and the viewing public. Saturday, the 8th of March, will be the 8th annual Mardi Gras fundraiser celebration for the Brockton Day Nursery. Everyone, um, a lot of people in the community in, in the city with children, they go there, um, they have a good time, and, and they really need uh, your participation, your support. It'll be Saturday, the 8th, from at 7 o'clock at the Shaw's Center. Shake off all the snow blues and, and get over there and enjoy Mardi Gras with all of us. We have the food, the music, the fun, the entertainment, the masks, everything. So just come on down, Shaw Center, 7 o'clock. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Yanieri. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Moment of personal Motion. privilege, if yes, I might. I just want to make an announcement that next Tuesday evening, oh, March the 11th, that's next Tuesday evening, March 11, 2014, I'll be holding a Ward 3 meeting at the Kennedy School in Ash Street from 7 to 9 p.m. So I welcome all the residents of Ward 3. All meetings are open to the general public. Any of my colleagues that wish to attend, that's next Tuesday evening, March 11, 2014. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilors. Uh, Councilors, uh, we, uh, we had a great city event on okay. Saturday night at the War Memorial, uh, DBA, John Marion. Uh, there was a really good turnout. 
Okay. Uh, I've never seen Shayna Bonds play the drums like, <laughs> uh, like she did, Councilor Bonds. But uh, you know what? That's a, a wonderful, wonderful building. It really is. They've done uh, really yeoman's work, renovations. It's really a beautiful thing. And I, uh, I look forward, and I know all my colleagues do, to uh, many future events in there. Concierge. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I might, I hereby move that the City Council go into executive session to discuss strat strategy with respect to penny litigation as an open meeting may have detrimental effect on the litigation position of the public body. Second. Motion is made and uh, properly second. A motion is made to go into an executive session to dis discuss strategy with respect to pending litigation as an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the public body. As chair, I state that an open meeting may indeed have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of this public body. The motion has been properly seconded. A roll call vote is required on this. Madam Clerk, if you could please read the roll. Shirley Azak. Yes. Shana Barnes. Yes. Timothy Cruz. Yes. Dennis DiNapoli. Yes. Michelle Dubois. Yes. Dennis Aranieri. Yes. Tom Monahan. Yep. Moises Rodriguez. Yes. Jazz Stewart. Yes. Paul Studensky. Yes. Robert Sullivan. Yes. That was unanimous, right, Madam yes, Clerk? Yes, it was. Councils, that was an 11-0 vote. Uh, motion carries. Uh, the Council, please be aware the Council will not be coming back into open session. We're going to adjourn, adjourn after executive session. We're hereby in executive session now. We'll meet over there. Thank you. Yeah.